concept will come into American society this time. The idea of leisure. The separation of, remember on the farm, work and home are the same thing. You don't leave home and go to work. It's all the same thing. But in this new modern society, particularly if you're in a city, you have these two different things. There's workplace and then there's your home. And that created the notion of leisure time. When I am not at work, that is my time. That is my free time. Uh, particularly with the invention of the weekend, which is invented by union demands for this, but merchants in Pittsburgh, shop owners, who realize that workers have no time to buy their goods, and so they begin pressuring factories to close for a day, and that's how we get Saturday. But, and then, of course, evenings when you get off work. And this became leisure time, time that was your own to do what you wish. This, farms didn't really work that way. That was much different. We also begin to see paid vacations and a decrease in the hours of, of, of people working a week. The average work week will be over 70 hours a week in 1860. It'll be under 60 hours a week in 1900. Of course, today we consider 40 hours a standard work week. But it's also happening on the farms as mechanization, as all these machines um, are, are creating more efficient farming, and farmers are having more free time too. Now, leisure used to mean laziness. If you said somebody was at leisure, you meant, why aren't they working? But with this new notion of these two different worlds, your work time and your free time, leisure became a celebrated thing, something that you strove for. And the unimagined increase in the number of goods to buy challenged notions of thrift and self-denial. Uh, previous attitudes had been you should work any time you have the opportunity to work, and you should deny yourself things, and you shouldn't spend money. Farmers tried very hard not to spend money because they made things their own, uh, on their own, and they didn't really need to go out to the store and buy things all that much. But in this new society, that's all you did. You had a paycheck, and then you spent that paycheck. And there began to have be this attitude of, we can have it all. You have to understand, because of things like the mass marketing and production of clothing, people who might have had four or five shirts and one or two pairs of pants uh, just a, few, uh, a generation or two before are now able to go out and buy full wardrobes. And, and that's what we did. There was also an expectation of entertainment. There was an idea that if we weren't at work and we weren't busy with some other project, we needed to be entertained. Of course, we still have that idea today. Men would frequently go to saloons or, or go see sports. We'll talk a lot about sports in a minute. Women preferred shopping, tea, uh, tea parties, and lunch parties. Um, theaters, pubs, and clubs would usually cater to a particular ethnic group. So the bar would be an Irish bar or it would be an Italian bar, which would be true for the theaters as well, interestingly enough. Uh, some places would see multiple groups converge in one place, but that wasn't really all that common. Uh, one example of a place where lots of different groups came together were parks. Uh, parks were, uh, rich people would go there to get away from the hustle and bustle and the noise of the city, uh, while workers would go there to play and often play sports. Baseball is, a, is essentially invented in its modern form in a park across the river from New York City, for example. And so this would be where you might have all different levels of society and all different ethnic groups having uh, enjoying their leisure time together. So let's talk about sports. The first great American sport, of course, is baseball. It evolves from uh, cricket, uh, which, of course, is brought over from England. Early versions of baseball appear by the 1830s in America. There's myths that it was invented during the Civil War by a Civil War general. That's not true. It predates that. It was popular in the Civil War, and it certainly spread in the Civil War as soldiers from different parts of the country introduced the game to their, to their brothers in arms there. Post -Civ after the Civil War, there's over 200 professional and amateur clubs in existence playing, but it wasn't like today. It wasn't terribly organized uh, in these leagues, and it certainly wasn't uh, uh, as big a spectator of it as it is today. Alexander Cartwright um, establishes uh, the beginnings of the modern rules. They're actually a little bit different than what we have today, but it's the first attempt to make real serious rules. In 1869, the city of Cincinnati gets their own professional baseball team, the Cincinnati Reds, and this is the first team to be paid a regular salary to play baseball, so we call them the first professional baseball team. By 1876, seven years later, the Reds have joined um, the National League, this is a group of clubs who all get together and play each other, and they pay their players. This is the beginning of professional sports in America, or professional team sports anyway. Um, there was briefly the American Association that came along and disappeared, it, but it won't be until 1901 that we get a second league, the American League. Now, if you don't know baseball, the National League and the American League are still around today, uh, greatly expanded, but they're still there. In 1903, we have the first World Series where the champions of the two leagues play each other. The Boston Americans, who are now the Red Sox, uh, defeat the Pittsburgh Pirates in that first World Series. Baseball is a game for working class men. Its fans and its participants tend to be laborers. 
the game for the elites was football. Football is developed in colleges. Uh, the first uh, thing that we recognize as a football game, which evolves out of rugby, by the way, is played in 1869 between Princeton and Rutgers. In old football, you wouldn't recognize. You wouldn't understand it. It looks a whole lot more like rugby than, fo than today's football. Uh, but by the end of the 1870s, it's begun to evolve into what we consider to be football. It was incredibly dangerous, I might add. In fact, Teddy Roosevelt uh, uh, banned football until they made rules to make the game safer uh, in the early 1900s. Uh, people would frequently die doing this. But it was a game of elites and upper-class uh, kids and college kids. In 1891, James Naismith will invent basketball, which is un uh, a uniquely American game. It didn't even evolve from, from other games directly. It did indirectly. Uh, but it's a very American game. Boxing was, might have been the most popular sport at the time. It had been considered disreputable, as you can imagine, if not criminal. It was outlawed in many places. But it, becomes very, it becomes very popular in this post-Civil War era and much more accepted. You'll notice here they're boxing uh, with bare hands. Um, they didn't have gloves yet, and, and that made it much more dangerous and much more uh, violent. Other sports are, are, are also becoming popular. There we see James Naismith, the inventor of basketball. But golf, which had been around for a long time. Tennis, which had also been around for a long time. Bicycling, croquet. Uh, these were often played by the wealthy. These were all kind of games of the rich. And they also crossed gender lines, which was kind of interesting. Men and women might play these sports together. Women's colleges will, in fact, begin to introduce women's sports. Uh, things like track crew, swimming, and of course women's basketball, which you see there in this wonderful picture here on the left. 